Uh, thank you for hosting me today. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, essentially an update to the calibration that we have on our Vanta XRF instruments. Uh, I'm from Olympus. Um, you'd be familiar with Olympus providing other field portable tools such as field portable XRD um, out in the field for looking at mineralogy. Uh, and uh, obviously we've had the handheld XRFs for a while. Um, the benefits of PXRF, I don't really need to spend too much time on. Um, we've had Dennis and, and John provide some, some really good uh, uh, points about how it can be used to uh, cost effectively and to increase efficiencies in the field. And of course, um, if you do use them in a, in a well-defined method, you will get very good quality data that correlates quite well to, to the method you're referring to. So, so what you're looking at here is some plots of uh, a really old model instrument analysing on just some, some uh, loose powders. But we have a problem. Um, and the problem, as you know, has been for cobalt. So the way XRF works is it's not one size fits all. We'd like it to be that way, but there are some elements, if they are present, that can cause interferences with other elements that we might be interested in. And uh, cobalt is uh, an element at the moment that seems to be on everyone's lips. Everyone's looking for it. Not everyone, but a lot of people are looking for it. Uh, and even if you're not looking for battery metals, you, you might be interested in cobalt for your, uh, for your lithogeochemistry. And the problem with cobalt is if there's iron, significant iron present, um, and especially if you've got nickel present, the, it's very, very hard uh, to see cobalt. So energy dispersive XRF, which is what we use in the handheld XRFs, uh, looks for one spectral peak. We've got multiple spectral peaks we can choose from. We tend to use the one that's optimal, gives us the lowest detection limits for the element we're interested in, and presents the least interferences. Uh, and so what we normally do is if one, one peak is interfered with by the presence of another element, we choose a different peak. So the problem that's been with cobalt is iron produces a really nice, big, tall peak exactly where we expect to see the primary peak for cobalt. So that's a bit of an issue. So if we then switch to using the second peak for cobalt, unfortunately, if nickel's present, um, it, it lies in the same vicinity and it's not, not able to be discerned unless you've got a lot of nickel. And here you can see, this is with 49% nickel in a, in a sample. That peak there is the second peak from iron, and it's sitting right where the cobalt peak. We need to be able to see that. So that's with high iron, and then if you go down to, you know, small amount of iron, you've still got these tall iron peaks, and then you've got nickel, which has the effect of increasing the background noise. So essentially, when those two elements are present, um, when they're not present, fantastic, we can see the, the cobalt, but when they are present, it's problematic. And there are different methods we use. You've probably heard people referring to XRF using for fuse bead and using for pressed powders. There's a couple of methods we can use on the handhelds to try and get around this, um, but they, they all have their, their own issues. So the holy grail for us has been in, demand to client, uh, in, in response to client demand is we need to be a way of being able to see the cobalt reliably we're not trying to be the lab, so, so we understand there's always going to be issues from time to time, but on the whole, we can see cobalt reliably when there's you know, a good amount of iron and nickel present without having to do too much in the field, otherwise it defeats the purpose of being a, a field portable tool. So recently, Olympus released a new method, a geochem method called geochem cobalt. The marketing team are really, really onto things with that, with that name there. And... Uh, I've asked them, can you tell me how you did it? And they said, no. Nah. So um, just, we just need to know they did it. And the big question for me was, does it work? And they'd sent me two iterations of the same algorithm in the last year, and we tested them on client samples, and they didn't work. So I was a bit skeptical. So I approached a couple of clients, um, or a couple of handheld XRF users uh, in, in South Australia, uh, one had a data set of 16 samples which had significantly high iron, which was always going to be a problem for handheld XRF to see cobalt reliably. And the other one had a larger data set that the iron wasn't quite as high. It was up to sort of 18%, um, but there was a lot of nickel present. So it's kind of the perfect storm um, to be able to, to, to mask the cobalt. We analysed them as they were, so they were in pulps. We put them in XRF cups with film nothing special, uh, analysed them 60 seconds per beam, and I didn't do any corrections. So this is the calibration out of the box. That's the way it was set up. 
on the client's desk. That's the Vanta there. That's a little test stand, and, and then you run everything from your PC. So on the 16 data set, that's the, that's the samples for Cobalt. And that's, that's quite nice correlation, even down to low levels. So what we normally would see previously to this, um, once we get down to around this level, the points either blow out and, and they sort of hang out in a, in a large cloud around here, or they have a perfect correlation with iron, so it's an interference, or you just don't see the points at all. So that's quite pleasing. And you can see there the iron for these samples were, were quite high, up to some of them quite high. And the other data set, this is the cobalt results. This is the 50 samples data set. Again, really nice correlation down to low levels, which was particularly pleasing for us and for our clients. Iron's always really nice with handheld XRF with a little, just a little bit of sample preparation. And you can see the nickel there was uh, coming up to sort of half a percent. Thanks for listening.